Hello, my name is Paul Rösch. With my colleagues Irina Atsimovic and Robert Landig, I am interested in the regulation of gene expression. In our recent work, we show how the bacterial transcription factor RFAH is converted into a translation factor by switching its C-terminal domain from an all-alpha helical fold into a beta barrel. This conformational transition activates translation. Among many transcription factors, NASG proteins stand out as the only universally conserved regulators. The best studied examples, NASG and RFAH from Escherichia coli, consist of two domains connected by a flexible linker. In NASG, the domains move independently. The N-terminal domain is of mixed alpha-beta topology and binds to RNA polymerase. The C-terminal domain is a barrel-like beta sheet and interacts with diverse cellular partners. The crystal structure of RFAH shows that the N-terminal domains of RFAH and NASG are very similar. However, the C-terminal domains are conformational antipodes. In RFAH, this domain falls into an alpha hairpin that tightly binds to the N-terminal domain. This interaction masks the RNA polymerase binding site and locks RFAH in a silent state. This explains why in contrast to NASG, which regulates many genes, RFAH is only recruited to operons that contain the so-called OPS site. Yet the sequences of the C-terminal domains are as similar as those of the N-terminal domains. Using NMR spectroscopy, we confirmed in our study that the structure of RFAH captured in the crystal is also preserved in solution. Remarkably, we found that the isolated RFH C-terminal domain consists of a five-stranded beta barrel, which is virtually identical to that of NASG. This suggests that the C-terminal domain refolds when the domain interface is disrupted during RFH recruitment to the elongation complex. But does refolding also occur in the full-length protein? To answer this question, we used an RFH variant with a TEF protease cleavage site engineered into the interdomain linker and analyzed it by NMR spectroscopy. Up in addition of TEF protease, signals of the C terminal domain in the beta barrel conformation gradually appeared, while the signals of the C terminal domain in the alpha helical form disappeared. This clearly demonstrates that the C terminal domain refolds spontaneously when released from the N terminal domain. During RFH recruitment to the transcription complex, the domains have to be separated to expose the RNA polymerase binding site. Hence, we suggest that refolding occurs during transcription. What is the functional role of the refolding of the C-terminal domain? Two years ago, we showed that the NASG C-terminal domain interacts with ribosomal protein S10 to couple RNA polymerase to a ribosome. Using in vivo reporter assays, we now found that RFH dramatically activates reporters that lack ribosome binding sites and that this effect depends on the C-terminal domain. Results of targeted chip-chip analysis and formaldehyde cross-linking supported a direct interaction between S10 and the C-terminal domain of RFH. Next, we characterized this interaction in detail by NMR spectroscopy. We found that the C-terminal domains of RFH and NASG make very similar interactions with S10 and these contacts can be made in a free and the ribosome bound S10. Summarizing, we present evidence that RFAH is conformationally regulated and can bind to the ribosome. RFAH thus simultaneously activates translation and blocks rho-dependent termination. In vivo, RFAH interacts with the OPS DNA presented in the context of the elongation complex. This induces domain separation, which results in a complete refolding of the C-terminal domain from an all-alpha helical hairpin into a beta barrel conformation. This dramatic conformational switch enables RFAH to regroup ribosomes to mRNAs that lack shine Galgano elements. For some time, it is known that so-called metamorphous proteins undergo structural interconversions most notoriously in prion-related neurological diseases. However, the dramatic all-alpha to all-beta switch of an entire protein domain, as we observed it, is so far unique in its magnitude as well as in its functional consequences. And it is the first time that such a refolding event could be directly followed.